Hello everybody, Interior Terry back again with another video. Oh my dear God, what a match. What a thriller between Roger Federer and John Millman. We all knew that John Millman would be Federer's first test here in Australia Open because let's face it, Federer's first two, first two opponents, they were not... We all knew that they will never defeat Roger Federer. And John Millman, we knew that if we look at the past, Federer has had... Has had has had difficulties against John Millman. It, the head-to-head -head was 2-1 for Roger Federer, but the, the, that only one victory that John Millman had against Federer in the past was in that US Open 2018, where Federer almost passed out, like he has said himself. Uh, because Federer was so affected by the heat, and by, by uh, so he, he was dead tired in that match, and John Millman he almost defeated Federer in this one as well here at Astral Open, the third round. And to be quite honest, he should have defeated Federer. He was up 8-4 in that super breaker in the fifth set. Uh, but Federer, he fighted. He never gave up. Uh, Federer's, Federer's fighting spirit is something that he doesn't get a lot of credit all the time in his career because he has so many other uh, attributes that get so much more credit like forehand like serve like all his all his winners that he uh, that he does like like his finesse drop shots uh chip and charge yeah you name it he's he's murderous talented uh but his fighting spirit is it, it isn't something that he gets a lot of credit for actually uh, so, but he really fighted like a lion in this match. He never get, he never gave up, and so he sh Feder should have a lot of credit, and I will give him a lot of credit for never surrendering, for never giving up, for all, for never stop believing. He believed that he could win until the last point was over. Me, to be quite honest. Uh, I gave up when he was down 8-4 in that super breaker. I did that. I thought I thought with myself, all right, Feder, it is over. You will be packing your bags now in this year's edition of Astral Open 2020, and you will be you will be on a flight home to Switzerland on your private jet. Uh, but Feder turned this mm, hopeless situation around. And he won this match. He won six straight points, if I'm counting right, uh, in that super breaker from A4 and turned this around to eight to ten eight. So all the credit to Roger Federer. The guy is 38 years old, and he just won a brutal fight with John Millman, who is younger than him, at least a couple of years. Uh, I don't know exactly how many years younger John Millman is. Nevertheless, he's younger than Federer, like the most players that he faces are nowadays. And John Millman is not an easy opponent, not for Federer at least, because Federer, he hates grinders. And John Millman is a grinder. Like I said in my preview yesterday, John Millman will not defeat himself. Feder needs to defeat him because John Millman is so good from the baseline. John Millman is a worse version, two, three classes, three classes worse than Nadal and, Fe and Djokovic. He isn't the player who will do over 50 winners, who will blast winners from forehand and from backhand. He isn't that kind of player. He isn't the player who will go to the net and in every single point. He is a player who will squeeze out unforced arrows from you from the baseline he will make you hit another shot another shot another shot extra a la nadal a la djokovic but he does it of course three times worse because in djokovic and nadal we have weapons as well like djokovic has a murderous good backhand murderous good returns nadal murderous good forehand um, and so forth so of course Milman is not in that class in in that uh, in in level like Nadal and Djokovic, but he has a similar playing style. He chases down every single ball. We have a couple of players who are chase who are chasing down players. 
who chase who, who where they chase every single bomb B ball Milman is one of them Schwartzman is one of them let I, I'm coming up on top of my head so you have you have to hit through them if you don't hit through them you will be in big trouble and uh, and Federer isn't the old feather when he was on his peak he cannot hit through his opponents like he did in the last couple of years when he was younger and when when he was stronger when he was faster he cannot do that he he needs to in some way he needs to figure out how to beat them with finesse with with uh, chip and charge with uh, in some points grind them down as well even though that feather isn't that player who grinds down his opponents he cannot do that he's he just cannot do that. So, uh, Federer was not good in this match. Now I have to criticize Federer. I, have, I give him a five minutes, six minutes almost credit. Now I have to criticize him. He was not good, of course. He went from these two first matches where I said that he's the player has, who has impressed me most. Now he went from super good level to average disaster level against John Milman. Of course, the opponent also made Feder to play bad. Like I said, Feder doesn't like to play these kind of opponents. Feder likes more to play against big servers, or, or player, players who takes big cuts of, on the ball, a player who uh, who plays who pl players who play similar like Feder. Feder doesn't like playing grinders. Feder doesn't pl like playing players who doesn't ne who never misses from the baseline like John Milman uh, that's why Federer struggles against him that's why Federer has lost against him in the past like he did in US Open two years ago but Federer should do a better match than he did he should serve better he only served I believe 66 7 percent first serves in that is not Federer should at least serve over 70 percent he needs that because whether, like I said, he will never wear his opponents down. He's not Djokovic, he's not Nadal, he's not Milman, he's not Schwartzman, uh, he's not RBA. You understand, guys, what I mean? Feder needs his serve. If, without Fe without high percentage of first serves, Feder is in big trouble. Like he was and almost lost this match and should have lost it. But Feder showed big fighting spirit and came through in the end. 82 unforced status from Federer is not acceptable, even though it, it is five sets, it is almost five hours or how long this match was. I, maybe it was even five hours. I didn't check. 82, 82, 82 unforced errors, it's too bad. It's way too many. 82 unforced errors. It is not acceptable. This will, this will never be enough for Federer to win the tournament. Federer will never win this tournament. He will never. I can say it already now. I... I have never said Feder will win this tournament, but I was pretty certain he will survive the first week. I have said it. Everybody can beat everybody. I said it yesterday. But Feder, Djokovic and Nadal, they will not lose the first week. Now I will say Djokovic and Nadal will not lose the first week. Feder can do it. He has one, one more match to go to survive in the first week. And it is against Fusovic on Sunday. One more match for Feder to play in the first week and to survive because in the second week Feder will be exit will be knocked out he will be there uh, if not at, at least from Djokovic in the semi-finals if Feder makes it there I'm not certain anymore because Fusovic has been playing good the ranking doesn't matter guys look Milman is 47 in the world I believe uh, the Look, guys, the ranking matters most in other sports. Soccer, basketball, ice hockey, you name it. Do you think a, a, a soccer team who is world number 140 ranked can push a, a, a soccer team who is world number 5 in the world ranked? Do you think, like in the second round when Bolt, the Australian guy, pushed Dominic Team, Bolt, who is 140 in the world ranked, pushed Dominic Team, who is world, world number 5, to a 5-set thriller? Do you think that will happen in other sport? No. The ranking doesn't mean crazy much in tennis like it does in other sports. It means little, but not crazy much like it does in other sports. And Fusovic, I don't, Fusovic is 67 in the world ranking, I believe, something like that. But Fusovic has only dropped one set so far in the, in the Austral Open. So, Federer is the favorite in that match. I'm not saying that Fusovic will defeat Federer. But I'm not sure anything about Federer anymore. I am not, because he's so inconsistent. 
He can play from murderous good tennis to brutal, horrible tennis. All credit to Federer, he went through, he's not you know, in his peak of his career anymore, he's 38 years old, like I said, but 80, 82 and Foster is not acceptable, he did 62 winners, so he, he does 20 more and Foster than winners. And he, and he only breaks uh, in three occasions out of 10 opportunities, that is 30%, I believe. That is not acceptable as well. Feather went to back to all sins with bad break, with poor breakpoints conviction, with a lot of unforced errors, with bad returns. His returns was not good as well. <sighs> no, no, this was not a good, good performance from Feather. The only positive I take from this is Feather's fighting spirit, his big lion heart, his willing, his will to win and not surrender. That is what I take from this victory from Federer and all credit to, for Fe to Federer for that, but Federer will never win this tournament. Federer's last chance was last year in that Wimbledon against Djokovic. Let's face it, guys. Let's face it. I said it so many times, I will say it again. Federer will never have that kind of opportunity ever again in his, in his career. It, he will not, guys. He will not. Let's face it. And we had some uh, some upsets. Raonic defeated Tsitsipas. I told you, Daniela. Don't be so certain that Tsitsipas will defeat Raonic. I told you. I told. I said yesterday. I will not be shocked if Raonic defeats Tsitsipas, and I am not. I'm a little surprised, but not crazy much because Raonic he has that murderous serve, and uh, Tsitsipas didn't see any single break point in this match against Raonic. Any single. Raonic didn't face any single break point opportunity against him because Raonic has that murderous serve and it took him to the fourth round he won in straight sets and then Cilic defeated RBA in five sets thriller uh, a little surprise there uh, but not a murderous surprise like I've said before I'm not surprised in any other of the results what happens in in this Arsenal Open besides if Djokovic and Nadal if they lose in the first week and Federer to some extent but Federer he can lose the first week. Now he has only one match still to survive in the first week, and it is against Fusovic. Let's see if he if he will survive there. I think he will do, but I am not sure anymore. All right, guys, uh, this is it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Take care and bye bye.